Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Terry Hunter. I'm an angel therapy practitioner, intuitive astrologer, Reiki master, and empowerment coach. And I'm here today to talk about this week's full moon in Gemini. It is the culmination of a six month cycle that started in June of 2021 with the new moon in Gemini. And it was also a solar eclipse. So that's very significant. Um, before I start, though, I'm just going to do a little bit of business. All of the videos on my channel are based on whole sign Western astrology. I believe that astrology is sort of like a weather forecast of the soul's opportunities for enlightenment, for choices, for what some people call the ascension. Um, the ascension sort of is a little bit lofty for me. I believe that it's choices for happiness, which make us feel ascended within the human experience. So um, that's what I'm going to talk about today. And there's some other astrological dynamics that are coming up that are going to be very, very significant moving forward. And if we're paying any attention to the news headlines, you're starting to see some of these things play out in the real world. So I'm going to start with the basic um, dynamics of this full moon and a few other um, astrological dynamics. And then I'm going to go and do a reading for you, an angel reading um, based on your rising sign. But may I suggest that you use your moon sign as well, because I believe that we create emotionally. If we're feeling challenged about something, if we're focused on a problem or we're feeling anxious or nervous, we're, that's the platform with which we're taking our actions on. So I believe the moon is extremely significant at a par level with the rising sign. The rising sign represents our perception of the world, how we walk through the world, what we see when we observe a situation. How, you know, some people walk in and see the cup half empty. Some people see it half full. The sun, which is all of our birthday signs, is how we present ourselves out into the world um, and how we would like the world to see us. So um, when you're looking, um, I'm going to put timestamps below. It may take me a few minutes, so bear with me. But um, so again, you're rising, your moon, your sun. And if you have a cluster of planets, four or more planets, especially if they're personal planets like Venus, Mercury, or Mars, um, in one sign or house, look at that because that's a specific focus that your soul has chosen for this lifetime's incarnation and a place where you've chosen to put emphasis on. Okay. So basically, first thing I want to talk about is this full moon on the 18th of December, 2021 in Gemini. Gemini overall represents our everyday activities. It's ruled by Mercury. Mercury is, follows the sun around, or I shouldn't say follows the sun, but it's never far from the sun. And it zips around the, uh, the solar system in such a way that it's very social planet. It's very communicative. It represents what we read, what we speak, what we teach, what we um, absorb ourselves within our everyday activities. It rules our movements, um, our roadways, our sidewalks, our escalators. It rules teachers. It rules teammates and workmates and people that we spend um, time with in a cooperative way. Um, I want to say cooperative, but that doesn't, it's not always necessarily cooperative, but with a, with a similar intention, the way a team has an intention or a, a work, um, a work team has a certain focus on what they're doing. So back in July, uh, June, June 10th, we had a solar eclipse on the new moon in Gemini where seeds were planted. They were planted in conscious or unconscious ways. The full moon, this particular Saturday, if you're here in the Pacific, or I should say on the Western hemisphere, if not, I always suddenly think I mess those hemispheres up. Anyway, I'll go on. There's a culmination to what was planted in June of this year. We have also, the theme a lot of astrologers have talked about is the Saturn Uranus square. This is going to have its third meeting in an exact position on 
uh, right around Christmas Eve. So we're going to start to see over this next week, the illumination of something involving our, involving our everyday lives um, in the way of either a work situation, something that you have an epiphany that you are it could even be a focus of how you, what you're reading, what you're focusing in on. You may decide, I don't want to watch the news too much anymore because it's toxic for me and it's putting me in the wrong vibration. Um, we also have Pluto and Venus meeting and Venus is going to go retrograde and she and Pluto met on the 11th exact and had a rather intense conversation. I like to call that conversation. What are you pretending not to know? So we have three super big things happening. This full moon in Gemini is going to put a spotlight on something in your life. And, and when I go through the signs, this will be more the focus of the, of the area of your life. But for now, it's going to put a spotlight on something that you have an opportunity to liberate yourself from. Um, it's going to uh, put a spotlight on where you're potentially giving up your power to another person, where you are diminishing your value, um, where you're not paying attention to potentially a skill that you have. And all of this is going to feel a little bit disruptive as it happens. And I say that because it doesn't necessarily mean the outside world is disruptive, but it may feel um, disruptive on the inside, a, co a conflict between what you know you can manifest in a safe way, my job, and what I want to manifest and what I want to create potentially entrepreneurship. For instance, a lot of people got used to working from home during the pandemic, and now they don't see a real need to have to go back into an office. So this is part of the structures that we're going to see changed permanently moving forward. This is where the Saturn Uranus square is coming into play. Um, the, the full moon this week to me is playing very much into the Pluto Venus connection right now. So Venus represents our self-worth and our history, our family history. And so I think what we're going to see is a lot of people coming to some sort of conclusion, epiphany, um, realization. And I want to use a word that, that's attached to comfort, coming to, to some sort of reconciliation with a, an early dynamic. Gemini also rules our siblings. I forgot to mention that. So this could have something to do with coming to some sort of conclusion about a dynamic in your life that you're as powerful as you are going to be over. And now it's only your perception that really will be the true north for you. Let's let me be more clear. For instance, let's say you have a, a consciousness about something, but the other situation or the other person doesn't have a consciousness about it. So they behave in the same way over and over again. And you've decided to move away from it and you, you become more reconciled with it because you realize that the person is not standing in a real conscious way of being. Um, this is Pluto Venus. Pluto rules what is underneath everything. It's a very psychological planet. And in addition to that, the United States is coming up on its Pluto return. So for the first time in like 284 years, the planet of complete transformation, what's known as death and destruction and rebirth is going to meet uh, where the United States had their Pluto when the country was conceived. So overall, what we're going to see here is, I believe, some energies that are, might feel like they're coming out of nowhere. We may see people feeling disruptive. We may see people, uh, more people losing their minds in anger because of certain restrictions and mandates and precautions that the government is, is implementing on our behalf of our welfare, and yet it doesn't feel like our welfare. So as we walk through this time, I truly believe this is sort of the, the butterfly breaking through the cocoon. If I don't break the shell, 
I can't have a new environment. So the idea of a 40 hour work week just for the sake of being somewhere from nine to five doesn't make sense anymore with the technology that we have. Some of the relationships that we are in, Venus rules love and relationships. But she, as I said before, she rules your self-worth. So she's going to ask you this next few months, are you really showing up for yourself? Or are you giving your power away to somebody else and diminishing yourself? Because Venus, while she's considered a very friendly, loving planet, she can be very jealous and very angry when she's not acknowledged. And so she's going to ask you, as a human, if you're acknowledging yourself. Okay, and then, um, okay, I think that's where I, that's what I wanted to say about the astrological dynamics. I think, I hope I didn't forget anything. And let's go on to our readings. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with Aries and work my way towards Pisces. And I will talk about the house that this is happening in. And that is what I'm talking about is the landscape. Let's say that you were standing on a block, right? So if you're an Aries, you're going to go three houses in, and this is all going to happen to you in that third house. And so anyway, here we go. The third house is Gemini. So there's a common theme. Every single one, what I'm going to be talking about is, is this full moon in Gemini and each different sign, it will be um, in a different placement on the wheel. So when we start with Aries, it's in the third house of our everyday activities. It again will re reference what we read, what we speak, what we think, um, how we absorb ourselves in a mental and um, cerebral way at, in our everyday activities. It will, uh, this, this illumination is probably going to affect a lot of people um, in education, teachers, people in schools, we may see some illuminations um, of things that have been out of balance, let's say on sports teams within schools. Um, I'm trying to think of what other dynamics there are. This is specifically for Aries, rising moon, sun, and stelliums. Again, Gemini is your third house. All right, Aries, our first angel is Merlina. The second is Isaiah. The third is Ariel. And the final is Athena. Merlina is being joined by the king. Isaiah is being joined by the high priestess. Ariel is being joined by the raven. And Athena is being joined by the love card. Okay, so for Aries, rising, moon, sun, and stelliums. Merlina represents confusion and indecision. And the king represents the man. It also represents things pertaining to men, uh, justice, balance, and authority. Right now, I don't know that I think, Aries, that this is really about a man as much as I think things that are just and fair um, and things that are ruled by governments, authority, bosses, um, people who sit above us. And I want to say this, too, because the, the various strains going on with the virus are bringing into play various dynamics of restriction. And I think that's what's going on here is that there is a part of you that feels that you're confused and indecisive about how you should respond to the restrictions coming towards you or that are being implemented around you. And I feel as if for Aries, um, being the, ruled by the planet of war, this is now an opportunity for you to rather than go to war over the situation, rather connect with the higher self. Isaiah talks about giving births new ideas and new situations. And the high priestess is a very intuitive energy. She's a very receptive energy. It's almost as if there is this prof prophetic 
part of her, an inner knowing. And I feel as if for Aries, rather than taking action in the human body and just moving forward, this is more of an opportunity for you to sit back. Aries, the pioneer, Aries, the truth seeker, Aries with it represents courage and bravery. And now it's time to start to implement those energies of balance within the Aries dynamic in your everyday life. So let's, let, let me, let me show you what I mean. Well, I'll, I'll go back because the angels are asking you, they're saying it's time. And it's also a magical time to take everything you learned about yourself and the underbelly, the more challenging dynamics of Aries. Aries and start to really connect them to a, your spiritual self and start to allow yourself to evolve because what spirit is asking Aries to do is to lovingly assert themselves and not in a loving intimate way, but to start to practice conscious communications, Gemini, in your everyday environment, saying your truth, but in a way that if somebody was saying it to you, how would you receive it? So if indeed you're in Aries and you're used to saying, look, I'm just not into you. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm just not, it's just not for me. Well, that might seem a little harsh and a little abrasive. So now being conscious of what's going on, you can stand in a place of fairness and justice as you express any indecision or any discomfort in a way of being more diplomatic and yet still holding your own. That's what I think all this is, is meaning. So the, the new moon in Gemini, when there was a solar eclipse, gave you, Aries, an opportunity to see how you're communicating and if your communications are effective. If they're not been effective, this full moon allows you to illuminate your participation in that. Are you communicating in a way that you would receive favorably and respond favorably to whether the communication was pleasant or unpleasant. That's where I think we're going. And this in many ways is going to make you much more effectual moving forward in your life and in your everyday activities. Okay, let's go on to Taurus. Taurus, Gemini is your second house. The second house is naturally ruled by Venus, as you would know. Um, and so we're going to, this is going to be focused in on your everyday activities regarding your skills, money, um, how you view your family story and how it's affected you. It will um, give you an opportunity to take the Taurus aspects of earth and the Gemini aspects of the mind and marry them together, but not in a jarring way, in a way that's intentional, in a way that you can take what you've learned about yourself and move that into your present in a powerful way that feels effective and influential. That's what I want to say. All right, Taurus, what do the angels have to say for you? First angel is Bethany. The second angel is Zana. The third is Archangel Michael. And the final is Isaiah. Okay. They say that the second house is the house of security or insecurity. Um, Taurus rules, you know, money in the sense of Venus rules money. And it's in the house of I make money through my skills versus the Scorpio, which is the opposite house where I inherit money or I make money from other people's money. So when I'm looking at this initially with the angels, there's something about taking care of yourself in a bigger way. And I don't think it's about making money. I think it has something to do with your family history or how you view yourself in relation to the experiences that you've had so far. Because we have the B card, which is all about good luck and victory. We have Xana, 
um, and the forgiveness card together and the opportunity of the obstacle. We have Archangel Michael and the letting go card. And then we have Isaiah and the fear card. Bethany is about self-care. And the B card is about good luck and industriousness. And I want to offer it this way for Taurus. You've had Uranus going through your sign since late 2017. Uranus is anxiety, and it's nervousness, it's lightning, and it is electricity, and is expect the unexpected, it is explosions and implosions, it's also rebellion and liberation. And I feel like for my Taurus is what the B card and what Bethany is saying is it's time to take an inventory of all the work that you've done and to start to realize you're living an evolved version of yourself, not an old version of yourself. And it's time for you to catch up with that, not keep going back to where you've been and thinking that that's chasing you down. Because this full moon in the house, in your second house of how you think, what you read, what you speak of, gives you an opportunity to take that old story and history and make it work for you. Because Zana is saying you're protected right now from all types of harm. And I think of this as emotional. And then we have the forgiveness card. Well, for me, forgiveness is, a, is where... I don't actually have to forgive a human being. I can look at the situation and I can reconcile it as now a tool that has empowered me for the future if I'm willing to be brave enough to trust that smell when it comes up again. Because Archangel Michael is asking Taurus to be brave enough to have the courage to move away from fear, to move away from the old story and to allow yourself to be empowered. I am 100% convinced, while I don't enjoy it at all, that fear is the, is the very seedling for us to feel empowered, to feel exhilarated, to feel everything that we ever dream we could be starts with an idea and then a big fear ball that hits you. So what is spirit saying for Taurus? It's time to give life to new ideas and new situations about fear. So let's talk about a couple acronyms for fear. Face everything and rise. Thank you, one of my clients, who great acronym. And then false evidence appearing real. That's the old story. That's where as Pluto and Venus come together, your ruling planet, and they they have a very intense conversation. The first conversation they had two weeks ago is what are you pretending not to know? This conversation they're about to have in a couple of days is all about how, how, how willing are you to be powerful for your own happiness? Or are you going to continue to disempower yourself by saying, if only that person was this way, then I would be this way. That's what the B card and taking care of yourself is about. That's what the protection and the forgiveness is about. It's about a reconciliation that maybe your old perception has been tripping you up and you're in an evolved version of yourself and it's time to have the courage to start to actually live it and to realize that fear is not something that is meant to throw us away. This is not something we want to abolish or something we want to, to run from. This is something we want to understand. How does this fear want to make me feel powerful? How does fear really give me, I mean, if you think about it, I know I interrupt myself all the time. If you think about anybody who has the courage to take a personal talent, like for instance, singing, and to go put themselves on a television show and to sing in front of millions, potentially tens of millions of people between YouTube and everything else, for all of that criticism, and then they are praised. You can't have that feeling without walking through fear. So Taurus, it's time for you to start to catch up with what you've been doing. This Gemini full moon, the square between Uranus and Saturn and Pluto and Venus's conjunction, which is going to happen three times over the next few months, but two times within the next week or once and about a week ago and than this week. These are all very challenging energies, but they're energies that are meant to lift an old blanket off of you so that you can live freer in an evolved version of yourself. All right, let's go on to Gemini. This is happening for you in your first house of self. 
how you see the world, Gemini, how you see yourself in the world. It's about what you think about. It's about what you write about. It's about what you teach. It's about how you work with others. It's about your siblings and small children as well. So I wanna ask Gemini, what happened in June of this year, 2021, that started to open things up for you, that started to open your mind in a new way about a new evolved version of yourself? Our first angel is Chantal, the angel of love and romance. The second is Akasha, the teacher. The third is Desiree. And the final is Serafina. <laughs> Gemini in and of itself is a very, very youthful sign. It is fun to be around. It's light. It's flirty. It's, um, gosh, you go to a party with Geminis and Leos, and you'll have a great time. <laughs> They're fun people. So let's see what spirit wants you to know about romance right now, Gemini. Oh, and we have the love card joining Chantal. We have Akasha joining the serpent. We have Desiree joining the wind fairy. And we have Serafina being joined by the goblin. This is what I want to say. First thing is Gemini represents the twins, right? So, you know, you have a tendency to go back and forth in your thoughts. It's almost like you can contemplate things from many sides. And that can be beautiful and infuriating at the same time. So Chantal offers a new romance for Gemini, either through a re-existed ignition or reignition of a relationship or through meeting someone new. And then there's the love card. Um, I believe for those of you that are inviting in a relationship, for those of you that are in an existing relationship, the best thing you could possibly do is throw your history away right now and do your best to stay in the present moment because the world is transforming in ways that feel very disruptive right now. But I also think that it's illuminating things for some people who may have been living more solitary lives and feeling pretty good about it. I talk about, you know, the people that used to be able to go sit in a restaurant at the bar by themselves and have a certain amount of social activity, and then they go home by themselves and they didn't really feel a need for an intimate relationship. Well, these things, these things aren't as available the way they used to be. And our perception of them is not as available. So my point is, is that for Gemini, I believe that a relationship or the reignition of a relationship is coming for you because people are wanting to connect in a more authentic way. So part of your job, Gemini, is to allow this situation to teach you that everything you think isn't true no offense, but sometimes your contemplation all comes from kind of the darker side, how you will lose. So this is giving you an opportunity to shed a skin. I don't think it's a healing. I think it's about recapturing a moment in time where you go, wow, I'm really not who I used to be and who I used to be isn't bad. But again, I've been evolving over time and I've been really looking at my thought process and asking myself, does my thought process serve what I want to experience in my happiness? Because the angels are saying that Desiree is saying conditions have not been favorable because your mind has not necessarily been able to truly sink into that more dreamlike experience that you want to have. It feels very conceptual. And, and in being conceptual, it's kind of edging out the physical experience there of it. So what I believe this full moon will illuminate is that love is being offered to you. And maybe part of this journey you've been on has been actually bringing that love into a bigger spotlight because your character has been revealed during a process of challenge. Because Serafina is saying that a happy change is coming to your family. And then I have the, the human ego. And the funny part is I think this is edging God out right now. I feel like as Gemini is able to identify where the chiming of the ego comes in that asks you, are you sure? Are you sure you're good enough? Are you sure you're smart enough? Are you sure you're cute enough? blah, 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 blah. 
And as, as you identify that, not as an evil part of yourself, but a part of yourself that's like fear. It's, it's a part of yourself that when you look at it, it's the seedling for your accomplishment and achievement and your higher vibrational experiences of joy and harmony and excitement and motivation and inspiration. Because these things can all take place and will take place simultaneously as the rest of the world appears to be going dark because transformation is upon us and the human doesn't transform voluntarily. They need a little motivation. All right, let's go on to our cancers. This is in your, Gemini is your 12th house. All righty. The 12th house is a very spiritual house, but it's also a house that feels hidden. It's a house that's behind me. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Yeah. Gemini is your 12th house. Okay. I scared myself for a second. I thought I got lost. Um, and I want to offer it this way because the 12th house is a house of um, hotels and ashrams and retreats and prisons and hospitals and research. It's, it represents a place where we spend time alone um, in contemplation, in meditation, in commune with the self. And I say that because it's a part of the self that we don't necessarily see as we walk through the physical experience. So what does this full moon in Gemini have to teach you about how you process things, read, how you read, what you speak, what you, what you um, communicate, where is your focus? Nope. All right, Cancer. Our first angel is Crystal. The second is Caressa, the third is Teresa, and the final is Rochelle. Cancer is, um, is such an interesting intuitive sign. And yet at the same time, there can be a little bit of unsureness attached to it because of the nurturing aspect. Cancer is very vulnerable because they're, they represent love of family and home and hearth. And so sometimes the crab gets caught kind of going sideways a little bit. And so I think what Crystal is saying and what this opportunity to illuminate in your 12th house is your inner knowing and sparking it in a way that helps you get past your head. Gemini, your head will always tell you something a little bit sketchy because it'll want to make sure you're, you're uh, that's where your ego lives. Okay, so here we go, Cancer. Merlin represents alchemy, justice, and balance. And Crystal says, have faith and hope there's more on the horizon that you can't see. I believe that this full moon in Gemini is going to illuminate an aspect of yourself that is about you and only you. Again, the 12th house represents sleep, the bedroom. It's not about interacting with other people. It's about me. It's about who and what I am. And I feel like for my cancers, this is an opportunity for you to trust an inner knowing of, I mean, the full moon is where, you know, the, 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 um, in a new moon at both times. Okay. So a new moon, the sun and the moon are conjunct in a full moon. There's an opposition. Okay. So there, there, it's an, it's an opposing, but I want you to think of it like warrior pose because the further out you extend this way, the more balance you have. So the more you're willing to not fall down on the idea of, I need to see it for it to be real. This needs to change for me to be happy. And you can trust a, an inner knowing the more balance will come in. Because what spirit is saying is there's an end of a chapter and new happiness awaits you as you're aware of your own inner communication. What are you telling? Because you may think, you know, that you're, you're aligned to your happiness, but I don't know if I think that spirit is saying that because I see Teresa representing worry and other people's opinions. And it's kind of time to move away from that a little bit and sort of give yourself a little bit of, of, 
I want to, I want to offer it this way for my cancer. Sometimes the people in our lives can't see our vision and our vision comes from an inner place, what Crystal is saying. And as you follow your inner vision, they can catch up later because spirit is encouraging you to follow your heart. As you honor and follow the guidance of your heart, prosperity will come to you. And there's the ego. I believe that much of the disruption that we're experiencing is a frustration that leads us to say, I can no longer fit into this little box that, that I've been put in. And I know that there's more, at least for me to experience for myself. So I'm going to start to give myself permission for that. Because again, Gemini rules our everyday activities. It rules our children like Leo, but the school age children, it rules teammates, workmates. So as you're going into these dynamics and you're thinking, because our, our work oftentimes is a second family. So I feel as if when you put an intention from your heart space out into the universe, and then rather than fretting about, will it happen, looking more like a detective and saying, okay, spirit, I'm looking for the signs and the omens, because part of, part of the situation that they'll illuminate is your self-talk what you're saying that's contributing and adding the law of attraction into your experience. Okay, let's go on to our Leos. Leo Gemini is your 11th house of networks of uh, 11th house rules Aquarius naturally. So it rules like space and time and it rules our hopes and our dreams. It's also a, a house of money. Okay, so let's see now. Leo, what does this full moon in Gemini have to say for you? What started back in June? Our first angel is Estera. The second is Mystique. The third is Bethany, and the final is Maya. Astera is being joined by the deer. Mystique is being joined by the king. Bethany is being joined by the love card, and Maya is being joined by the water fairy. Um, Leo is, is amazing. It rules the whole zodiac. It rules the heart. It rules this, it's ruled by the sun. It's a sign of great leadership. And now we're looking at a, um, having this Gemini full moon happen to in a, in a house where you have a lot of influence over others. And I feel when I'm looking at this spread that there's a part of you that is standing in leadership for yourself and maybe potentially for others as you reach for the stars with your dreams and desires and you don't compromise. And, and while you're willing to look at fear, you also understand the need for gentleness and diplomacy in following my heart's desire. The heart is, uh, is, a, is, a, is a feeling. It's not tangible. So it has this sort of ebb and flow of, of trust and, and then distrust and can I and I can't, I don't know, I'm not sure. And, and one of the challenging signs or challenging aspects of being a Leo, rising moon, sun or stelliums is being vulnerable to your heart. So this is being vulnerable on a stage where others can see you. And so here I have in the opportunity of the obstacle, I have justice, I have authority, and I have mystique saying to keep charging ahead. There is a very strong possibility that your leadership skills will be seen, or you will be seen by a leader. And your job is to sort of keep your focus on a sort of narrow, and I don't mean it in a way that excludes others, but sometimes when we're trying to reach for the stars with our dreams and desires, if we hear too many people asking us how we're going to do that, we get a little caught up and then we get into a wobble with our energy because right now it's super important to demonstrate self-love and self-love is never knowing necessarily how you're going to do it. Just knowing that you have the intention to make it happen. The, the natural, Leo naturally is a very creative sign. It creates children. 
the conception of children, the conception of personal ideas. It represents playtime and fun. So I think right now in the final position, what we're learning is for you to trust your heart because Maya represents schooling and education and the water fairy is going to represent my feelings. And this is about being gentle as there's a certain illumination Okay, again, Gemini, 11th house, and there may be an illumination that some of the people that you've been working with, it may be time to sort of let that chapter go where it goes and not resist it. Um, because I really believe strongly that this is not about an accomplishment, even though we're coming to a conclusion, I believe the full moon is about the conclusion of you not trusting your own inner guidance. And now you're being gentle and diplomatic with yourself as you start to trust it. And you, it's kind of putting the gas on and then letting the universe confirm it through signs and omens and, and little signals that you'll get and you'll feel it in your heart chakra. Okay, let's go on to our Virgos. This is gonna be in your 10th house. That is a very visible house. It's the house that naturally is rules, government and authority. It's naturally ruled by Capricorn. So we're going to see something going on in kind of a big way, or at least if it'll be public to you, it'll feel public to you. So even if it has something to do with your siblings, Virgo, then the whole family will know about it or enough people will know about it where you, where you will feel some sort of Public exposure is the way I'm wanting to put this. And again, we're coming to, you know, we've got Pluto and Venus in this really tight, sort of intense conversation saying, what are you pretending not to know? How are you contributing to your lack of happiness? Because if you're expecting yourself to be perfect or your siblings are expecting you to be perfect or your everyday work life is expecting you to be perfect, that's unrealistic and not even fun. So these are the things that may come to light. All right, Virgo. Our first angel is Grace and Antoinette. The second is Azure. The third is Archangel Gabriel. And the final is Rosetta. So Virgo and, and Gemini are kind of team players, just like Venus and Tor uh, Venus and <laughs> Libra and Taurus, um, because they have the same rulership. Venus and Taurus both have Venus, and Gemini and Virgo both have Mercury. And so I think this is really an opportunity to, um, well, let's see, let me add, I don't wanna, let me let's see what the other cards say. All right, Virgo, joining Grace and Antoinette is the Eagle. Joining Azure is the Focus card. Joining Archangel Gabriel is the Earth Fairy. And joining Rosetta is the Water Fairy. Okay. Grace and Antoinette is all about compassion and seeing things from another person's point of view. And I wanna offer it this way because I don't think this is really about seeing it from another human's point of view. As much as I think Virgo has an opportunity to there's something coming up for you that's bringing to bring a, a spotlight on where you're not taking care of you. Okay, you're either being too critical of yourself, you're expecting perfection, or you're around people who are not validating who and what you are. Because the eagle is all about the connection to the angelic realm, integrity, and spirit. And there's um, the Grace and Antoinette. And I believe this is for Virgo having compassion for yourself as you implement a certain sense of your own integrity for yourself. Because Azure says your desired outcome will happen in the near future. Have patience and faith and don't try to force it. And then we have the focus card. And I think that focus feels a little bit like it feels a little mercurial. It feels a little bit like people are depending upon me. People, it's not practical. It's not realistic. And there's too much looking at what's happening on the earth plane as if you make your moves based on that. Because Archangel Gabriel is saying to Virgo, it's really time to look at how you're communicating your insecurities, because I think on some level, you may be bringing them into the real world. The Earth Fairy also represents physical health. So if you have been feeling challenged physically, and God knows a lot of people have um, over this last 
couple of years, but if the last six months, then part of this is having compassion as you learn things. You are definitely this, whatever you're experiencing, whether it's a physical pain, an emotional pain, um, somewhere you're having to demonstrate demonstrate self-compassion. I think it's super important for the Virgo to start to think of yourself as the virgin who is innocent and starting a journey of discovery versus the old Virgo having to be perfect at everything. Because we have Rosetta here talking about children and Gemini rules children. But I think this could potentially be your inner child and it needs a little love. It wants a little bit of love. It wants a little bit of compassion for what's important to you, for what you want to experience. And I think it's a little bit of time for Virgo to realize that if I do something for me and I don't enslave myself to my service to others, then I am somehow being of service to others because the individual is important. Depleting the individual does not feed the collective. It doesn't do that. It just continues to deplete and deplete and deplete. So Virgo, when you're standing in the 10th house of Gemini right now, and you're seeing whatever is playing out on what feels like a public stage, it doesn't necessarily have to be trending on Yahoo for it to feel like a public stage. Your compassion with yourself, your ability to not get up your own grill or judge yourself or expect too much of yourself in the situation is the culmination. That's where this full moon in Gemini can really help tame the, the mind that is, is being unfair to you, that is expecting you to be perfect at something that should be fabulously flawed. All right, let's go on to our Libras. Libra, this is going to be for you in your ninth house. I have most of this in my memory, but every once in a while, I cheat sheets. All right, here we go. Libra, rising moon, sun, and stelliums. Our first angel is Teresa. The second is Indriel, the third is Azure, and the final is Ariel. The ninth house is naturally ruled by Sagittarius. It rules higher education, foreign travel, foreign ideas, foreign people. It rules uh, religion. It rules philosophy, ministers, priests. Oh my goodness, so many things. Now we put Gemini on top of that. Um, Gemini is our everyday activities. So what I think is happening for my Libras is there's going to be, Teresa's being joined by the disruption card. Indriel's being joined by the letting go card. Azure's being joined by the wasp. And Ariel's being joined by the frog. Okay, this could be a little bit challenging for my Libra rising moon, sun, and stelliums because there's going to be some sort of disruption in, in uh, Teresa represents worry. She represents... Uh, taking care of other people, this feels a little bit out of balance. So there may be a disruption, not with other people, but now you need to take care of you, Libra. And in some respects, I want to offer it this way, because in order sometimes for us to manifest the things we want, we really cannot allow a committee in our minds. Um, Gemini naturally rules a bit of a committee, rules teams, rules uh, group activities and sports. Um, well, there's overlap there because Mars does too, but I want to offer it this way because when I look at the spread overall, there's a little something about trusting your gut and not to be foolhardy, but if you stop worrying about what other people are telling you or thinking about what you're doing or how you're perceiving something, I feel that you will start to feel the light of your own inspiration. The letting go card is never letting go for me. It's funny how some distance makes everything look small and the fears that once controlled me can't get to me at all. 
And that's what I think Libra has here to offer is the inspiration that your fears are not here to tank you, but to inspire you and to help you feel achievement. And being a sign of partnership and Gemini being the sign of children, being a very social sign, both signs are social. There's a lot of other people attached to this dynamic. And sometimes we may feel selfish when other people are in need and we have to say, I need to take care of myself because it feels a little bit like that's what's going on. Other people are tugging at you and you really need to replenish yourself. And you feel like if you replenish yourself, you will be disappointing other people. This is the angel's advice. The wasp is a stingy, angry energy. And Azure is saying your desired outcome will happen in the near future. And I don't think you wanna be angry or stingy anymore. I think you're tired and you're like, okay, Let's just get back in balance. Gosh, if anything, Libra loves his balance. And your ruling planet, Venus, is in such an intense conversation with Pluto because Venus is tired of playing games. Venus is tired of feeling less than. So she's saying now, I'm willing to look at what how I'm getting in my own way. I'm willing to connect in a bigger way with spirit and not because I want to isolate myself from others, but I want to be more intentional about the experience that I have and I co-create because spirit is offering you a cleaning of house and a connection. And I want to say this too, because the frog is a very prosperous and uh, fortuitous little animal. You know, we see it in the Asian restaurants with the, the coin in its mouth. And so I feel as if for Libra right now, and Pluto is squaring you depending upon where you are, uh, yeah, it's squaring you. So if you're a late born ascendant or a late moon degree moon, I happen to be a 23, 24 degree Libra. There's been some big, big transformational questions being asked to me of myself. How much do I believe in myself? How much am I operating on an old operating system and it's time for an upgrade? How many emotional responses am I having based on something that happened 20 years ago? And who am I today? So it's time to disrupt whatever anybody else is thinking about you, how you're perceiving they're thinking about you. It's time for you to really allow for the evolved version of yourself and the inspiration of that so you can let go of any resentment that you're harboring and start really living the life you want to live and feel connected and to feel that that past served a bigger purpose. All right, let's go on to our Scorpios, rising moon, sun, and stelliums. Pluto is your ruling planet, um, Scorpio. So you have, without realizing it, signed up for a transformational life. And I don't care how small you think Pluto's influence is, but if it's your rising sign, if it's your moon, you're ready to lift the rug on all the things where you're holding yourself back. All right, here we go. Gemini full moon. How will it affect our Scorpio? Rising moon, sun, and stones. Our first angel is patience. The second is Ariel. The third is Yvonne. And the final is Omega. Patience is being joined by the history card, the Baird. Ariel's being joined by the perception card. Yvonne is being joined by the wind fairy and Omega is being joined by the letting go card. So for my Scorpios, this is happening for you in your eighth house. This is very interesting. Scorpio rising, this is your eighth house. So this is where I'm going. Scorpio is a very deep sign. It's a, the sign of the detective. It's the sign of the intuitive, the, the occult. It's a sign of sex. It's the sign of other people's money, meaning death, taxes. If you're a stockbroker, you, you move other people's money around. This is all ruled by Pluto in the eighth house of Scorpio. And I say this to you, Scorpio, because Gemini being your eighth house, there's going to be an element of thought attached to those dynamics. So 
Patience is an opportunity to learn and study. And the Baird is all about my history. It also talks about the enchantment of storytelling, but Pluto might be um, rubbing up against you in a way where you keep bringing up what's been long buried and you keep reliving a story and you're not really paying attention to how you're participating in the story. And the story doesn't necessarily feel aligned to what you want in the way of your happiness, because in the opportunity or the obstacle is the perception card and Ariel saying that new psychic and spiritual experiences are changing the way you view yourself and others. And it's time to really get into meditation and to pay attention to the laws of the universe, because now is a time for Scorpio to be willing to be vulnerable to their own thought process. And Scorpio is known as a fixed sign. So once you know, a certain conclusion has been drawn or an emotional attachment has been made, it doesn't want to change. It wants to just stay moving the same way, or I, I want to love this person. I want to stay in this job. This is what I'm used to. This is what I know. And now it's time to say, well, this may be what you're used to, but is it what's making you happy? Is it what's filling you and making you feel purposeful? in this on this planet because you have victory being offered to you over your own story if you're really willing to look at your own participation within that story this is the card of letting go is always that song from frozen it's funny how some distance makes everything look small and the fears that once controlled me can't get to me at all it's time to see what i can do to test the limits to break through no right no wrong no rules for me i'm free and there's victory so Scorpio, this full moon is going to illuminate how you've been interacting with your own mind, how you've been interacting with your own story and the story you've been telling yourself. Because I think on some level, this moon is going to ask you to be even more authentic and to own, not 100%, but at least what your participation is in anything that has not been pleasant. Are you staying in a situation, whether it's a job, a family situation, a love situation that is proven over and over again to be more of a desert than an oasis, and you keep waiting for it to be an oasis? When you're willing to look at your participation, to really look at how it's not to judge it, it's not to condemn it or crucify it, it's just an observation. And in doing so, maybe decide I want to be happy. And I'm just going to take a little bit of a baby step mentally so that I can start to feel in the physical world the victory of my own choices. So often, um, you know, you hear about somebody who's so afraid to stand up for themselves in a relationship for fear of loss of that relationship. And then they finally hit rock bottom. They're convinced the relationship will never be viable. And they start to stand up for themselves. And then the very thing that they thought would never happen starts to happen. But they waited so long that they have no love left in their heart. Bravery. To be yourself. Love yourself. Don't look to somebody else. All right, Sagittarius, here we go. Rising moon, sun and stellium. This is going to be your seventh house is Gemini. Give it a good shot. Our first angel for Sagittarius is Archangel Raphael. The second is Daniel, the angel of marriage. The third is Athena. And the final is Merlina. All right, Sagittarius. Archangel Raphael is being joined by the forgiveness card. Daniel is being joined by the restriction card. Athena is being joined by the love card. 
and Merlina's being joined by the birth and the rebirth card. So Gemini full moon. This Gemini full moon is the culmination of a six month cycle that started on a, on a, um, an eclipse, solar eclipse in June. So I want to ask you back in June, um, when you look back, what's going on, because I believe this illumination has to do with an epiphany of some kind. Gemini rules the mind. It rules our, what we read, what we speak, what we teach, and we inadvertently teach through our words and our actions. So Archangel Raphael will talk about a physical healing. I think this is an epiphany. And then I see the forgiveness card, which for me is a reconciliation. I've had this, I, this thought and now, oh, it makes sense to me. And I'll tell you why, because in Daniel's the angel of marriage, but he's also the angel of my history, my romantic history. And there's the restriction card. Venus is currently in Capricorn having a very intense conversation with Pluto. They're just dancing around each other and she's about to go retrograde. So she's going to be rethinking how about money. She's going to be rethinking about love. She's going to be going over a lot of things. And for Sagittarius, what I think is going on here is I believe that in the angel's advice, we see Athena saying to lovingly assert yourself and there's the love card. I think this is about sort of kind of maybe the bless the broken road, right? It's almost as if, if there is challenges or there've been challenges for you in your love life, in your experience this last six months, it's kind of been a definer, an awakener, uh, something that, that you experienced so that you could actually move into a new direction. And that new direction feels very much like a rebirth of, from my confusion to take my power back, to start to represent those higher dynamics of what Sagittarius rules, you know, ph philosophical things, big, big concepts. So some of those big concepts are we walk through dark times because they actually give us resources. They make us, they, they build our confidence when we conquer something that felt challenging. So for Sagittarius, somewhere in your romantic history, you get a choice right now to believe if that history is going to repeat itself or if you're rewriting that history. And frankly, I think you're going to rewrite it. I think you're going to come out of confusion. I think this full moon is going to illuminate something for you where you put an intention out there. And the intention to me also feels a little Plutonian in the sense where you've really gone into foreign territory emotionally and you've decided, where am I fooling myself? Where am I pretending I believe something? And really the underbelly is like, I don't know. I don't know. Because that underbelly is the real truth. And I feel like that's going to come up for you. And it doesn't have to be negative. I say underbelly because it's harder to see. I got to get down and look, you know? So I want to offer that to you because seventh house rules partnerships. And those aren't just partnerships with our lovers. It's anybody we sign a contract with. It also represents diplomacy. It represents um, uh, the minor areas of the judicial system, to, you know, the cops and things like that, I think. So I really want to offer that um, to you because I feel like if there has been challenges, they've been, as I said, an awakener to help you define more clearly how you want to show up and how you want things to show up for you. All right, let's go on to our Capricorns. Woo. Capricorn, have you been having everybody traveling through your sign, creating all sorts of dynamics? And now Pluto and Venus traversing back and forth. Venus is going to be in your sign until March. Let's see what this full moon has to illuminate for you. Gemini is your sixth house of service. Our first angel for our Capricorns is Chantal, the angel of romance. Then we have Teresa. Then we have Ariel. And finally, we have Shanti.
So we take the idea of Capricorn's sixth house being of service in the sign of Gemini. That's a lot of activity involving everyday things, reading, writing, teaching, speaking, um, again, teams of any kind, sports teams, as well as work teams, cooperative efforts between other people and school-aged children, um, you know, like middle school and below. Chantal is being joined by the focus card. Teresa's being joined by the trust card. Ariel's being joined by the cat. And Shanti is being joined by the B card. Capricorn, it's so interesting to me because having Venus, the, the planet of love, traversing your sign is quite interesting. Now, Venus is not always so excited to be in Capricorn. Capricorn is sort of a, you know, get it done. I don't care if you really like it. But Capricorn is asking to be written, rewritten, I should say, because Capricorn and Saturn in general is saying, I really don't care what lane you pick, but if you pick a lane, commit. So I feel like Capricorn, it's time to focus in on your love life. And I want to offer it this way because this is coming through your sixth house. And here we are talking Chantal love and focus. Maybe it's about loving what you do for a living. Maybe it's about really rethinking, you know, did I pick this job because it paid my bills and now it's eroding my health because I'm so stressed out about everybody? Because I feel like there's a re or there's going to be some kind of illumination for you. Something that's saying, I don't know if this is truly serving me anymore because you're worried about other people. And then there's the trust card. And I feel like so often people are like, if I'm not there, if I'm not there. And I think to myself, if you drop dead, you're not there. People will figure it out. No offense because you're not going to drop dead. But I do think it's time to assert some independence, your connection to the angelic realm, your connection to spirit, your connection to the universal laws and understanding healthy boundaries will actually bring you more peace and bring you more victory. And I want to offer it this way because I love Capricorn. It's one of my most favorite signs. I have no idea why, but almost every single one of my boyfriends was always a Capricorn. And I think it's the leadership that I see in Capricorn. So when you start to evolve past this stoic, dutiful dynamic and viewpoint and allow yourself to realize that whatever you're focusing in on, you, you should love because that makes all that hard work it gives it, it gives it meaning. This is how you will find peace of mind. So Capricorn, if you're re-evaluating what you want to do with your everyday activities in the form of work, may I support that for you? But I also want to encourage you not to really go to the outside world to get their opinion because they may be defaulting to a vibration of that you're used to or what they're used to. Well, so Joe, you worked in tech. You hated that job. You're going to go get another job in tech. And at the same time, you've always wanted to do something completely different. Now is not a time to necessarily jump and take action, but it's absolutely a time to start to reevaluate what makes you happy. And if you don't know what makes you happy, start to go into the idea of what does happiness feel like? For me, for a long time, I thought if I made a lot of money, I'd be happy. But what I realized is it's not money, it's not my currency, time, independence, choice, to be able to sleep, get up, walk my dog, get a cup of coffee, and then start my day. Instead of waking up when the alarm goes off, dragging my ass into the shower to go somewhere I don't enjoy. You got peace and victory ahead of you, Capricorn. So put your focus on what you love. And if you're not sure what you love, invite in experiences that you will love and spirit will start to bring them in and that will help you move the story forward. Okay, let's go on to our Aquarius's rising moon, sun and stelliums. This will be in your fifth house of creativity and children. And fun, fun, and Gemini is a fun sign. Sometimes a little too fun. Trickster. Okay. All 
Our first angel is Crystal. The second is Sonia. The third is Rochelle. And the final is Maya. A lot of activity going on in Aquarius. We know Saturn is traversing Aquarius right now, as well as Jupiter. So what does Aquarius have to learn about embracing your Aquarian energy? Crystal says, have faith and hope. And then there's the queen. Sonia and the raven are joining each other in the opportunity or the obstacle. Rochelle and the transformational swan are in the angel's advice. And then Maya and the deer. Um, Sometimes Aquarius can feel very, like be riddled with anxiety and, and worry and be very, very nervous. These are the more challenging dynamics of Aquarius, but I want to offer this because Aquarius is very innovative. It's very, it's very exploratory. It's going to go where no man has gone before. And in that, just saying that sentence inherently means that there's a sense of bravery attached to the Aquarian energy. And so I think it's about harnessing in that bravery because Crystal is saying, have faith and hope there's more on the horizon. And the queen is about reception. If you look at her, she's sitting very calmly. And here we're talking about Gemini. We're talking about the fifth house of children. If for some reason you are an Aquarius who would like to bring children into the world, or you'd like to birth a, a, your own personal creativity in some way. I feel like this is where you're sitting in this, this sort of uh, observation of what it is you are actually thinking about, because you are being guided by your team to see the magic of your own transformation, Aquarius. You're you're, you know, sometimes I think Aquarians feel like the island of misfit toys, you know, um, and being the holiday season, you know, our little Rudolph movie. And at the same time, I think everybody wants to follow Aquarius. We want to go into your innovative ways. We want to be liberated from those old Saturnian ways that hold us back. And I feel like when you connect to the magic of your team and of what you've already been through, the, the darkness you've already walked through and you start to claim it, magic will come. Because the angels are saying, as you honor and follow the guidance of your heart, the transformation is coming. And I also want to say this for Aquarius, because I believe a lot of Aquarians, when you calm your anxiety or you realize that the anxiety is an intuition you're ignoring, you won't feel so vulnerable and anxious and sort of twitchy, you'll feel more calm because spirit is helping you get an education about what your fear has to teach you. Fear is such an interesting thing because fear is feared, but fear is the most powerful tool when we pay attention to it. If fear is creeping up, what is it trying to tell me? Am I in danger? Am I projecting danger? Am I aligned to the truth of who I am? Or am I aligned to an old story of what my community has told me I am? Or am I absorbing myself into information? If you're an Aquarian who wants to give life to another person and you've had challenges, if you focus in on the IV and all of that and you start reading things about how hard it is to get pregnant, it's going to put so much fear inside of you that you'll be sitting on this platform you won't even even realize. So this is really about asking yourself, if I came into this life experience and I have a yearning for children, or I have a yearning to create something for me personally, would I really have this yearning just to live for the want of it? That doesn't make sense. So as you discover these things and you're gentle with yourself, as you discover that fear is a very powerful tool for you to feel achievement, for you to feel exhilaration and motivation. It's not fun, but it's powerful. All right, let's go on to our final sign. Pisces, rising moon, sun, and stelliums. This is going to be your fourth house of home. Hearth, family. Here we go.
Our first angel is Crystal. The second is Oceana. The third is Athena. And the final is Fiona. All right, Pisces, Crystal is being joined by the Burden card. Oceana is being joined by the B card. Athena is being joined by the Letting Go card. And Fiona has been joined by the Restriction card. Okay, Crystal says, have faith and hope there's more on the horizon that you can't see. And then there's the Burden card. So let me talk a little bit about the idea of Pisces and your fourth house being Gemini, naturally ruled by cancer. There's going to be the feeling of you having to trust an intuition here and or trust an intention that you have and it's not easy for you because Gemini, your mind is gonna start messing with you. It's gonna start going back and forth between all the possibilities of yay and nay and happy and sad and blah, blah, blah. And I feel this is where this is where Pisces is so beautiful because you are actually a very emotive sign. You're very um, intuitive sign. So when you pay attention to your intuitions and you realize that your mind is in some ways playing out your ego and the fear of Are you sure? Are you right? Do you are you do you trust it? Because your true victory will come in the form of trusting your emotional body and allowing yourself to take action on that. That's where the victory comes because now is a time for Pisces to truly, this is a card of lovingly asserting myself. And here is the letting go card where I'm always talk about that representing for me and my readings, the song, let it go from frozen. So now I'm looking going, what does fear want me to, how does fear want to empower me? How does fear in this moment, how is it, is it real? Is, it, is there an actual threat or is it false evidence appearing real? Am I projecting something out into the future that hasn't actually happened? Because Pisces, you have no shell of all the signs of the zodiac, you're just these little fishies. And when you get hurt, you may swim away to try to save yourself. And I feel like right now spirit's going, you can swim around, but don't run away because we have something for you. Spirit, Fiona's saying, now that you've asked God and the angels for help, be open to receiving. And this feels like take a pause. Like just give it a minute. Give it a minute. I know it doesn't feel easy right now. It's a burden to hold on to that faith because the outside stimuli is telling you, uh-uh, no, something's not happening. And again, full moons are the culmination of a six-month cycle. But every culmination is the embarkment of a new beginning. It's the impetus of a new journey. And I feel like this for Pisces is really kind of taking that moment. You represent the 12th house. Neptune rules you. Uh, Jupiter was your ancient ruler. All of these things are very spiritual. They're very interior. And it's about trusting the inner and allowing it to go into the physical so that it can manifest and become a resource for you trusting the intuitive that then comes back into the physical. And we start this cycle. So Gemini could represent your everyday activities and now taking the spiritual dynamic of the fourth house, intuitive, maternal, nurturing, intuitive body and starting to implement that into your everyday experiences, almost as if you're having a conversation with your guides. I think you're telling me um, I should trust not trying to look for a job right now. Something's telling me if I keep pushing, it won't happen. And then inadvertently, somebody calls you and goes, hey, blah, 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 there's a blah, blah, blah job. And then you're like, oh, I get it. When I sit in my intuitive body and relax, spirit starts to lead the way. And I no longer need to feel restricted by having to take action to make something happen. It's a inspired action that actually makes something happen. 
And that's where I think the Gemini fifth, fourth house is going to start to have you come in from taking, oh, I'm recognizing my mind. And, you know, there may be the possibility of there's something going on with children. But when I'm talking to such a long, a large collective and not an individual reading, I kind of stay away from the, the individual child. So trusting yourself, Pisces, that your intuitions, the inspirations you have in those quiet moments at home are actually very valid. And then waiting for spirit to give you the physical validation and then taking a step forward. All right. It's going to be um, a very interesting time coming up, guys, um, as we embark upon the holidays and some very um, illuminating, liberating, and a little jarring uh, astrological dynamics that are going to help set the tone for our liberation and our individual expression to be um, birthed more easily and, and, and more celebrated in general. So I want to thank you all for watching this video. Please like, please subscribe, please share, please comment, please come back. There'll be more content. I'm working on it. I got a new camera, a new computer. Hope you'll all like it. And if you'd like to book a reading with me, I'm available. My information is below in the description. Again, my name is Terry Hunter. I'm an angel therapy practitioner, intuitive astrologer, empowerment coach, and Reiki master. Sending love and light to you all. Peace out until next time.